Hi everyone, we are with Josh Wink today. Thank you very much, Josh, for the, the honor of accepting the interview. It's uh, really a pleasure to have you. Thank you. I'm uh, glad to be here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, first, I want to ask you a, a question about uh, your musical background. I want you to know what kind of music you were listening at home when you were a young boy. How young? Let's say in your childhood, the, the age of your, your son. 11. My son is 11. How old are you? He's 11. Yeah. Okay, so um, at that age, I wasn't as immersed in music and introduced to the music that I became when I was 13 and 14. 11, I was doing work with a lawn landscape company, doing uh, making people's lawns look good, you know, raking leaves, cutting grass, okay. doing stuff like this. And I had a Sony Walkman cassette mm -hmm. player. Mm -hmm. And I was listening to like Earth, Wind and Fire albums. Uh, let's see, Stevie Wonder, uh, Genesis, Thompson Twins, uh, Depeche Mode, a little bit of, of everything on the pop side of soul, funk, and new wave when it first started to come out. Uh, but I was listening to these albums again and again on auto reverse on the cassette player. My musical history really broadened when I started to get into being a mobile DJ when I was 13. Oh, okay. And then I started buying new music and all different kinds of stuff. So uh, then a little bit later, I got into punk rock and reggae and then hip hop and then electronic alternative music. But uh, my mother was listening to world music and um, like Third World or Joe Jackson. My brother turned me on to Kraftwerk, um, Arlo Guthrie, David Bowie. Uh, my father was a classical music listener. So I, I got a little bit of everything at that young age. Okay. Uh, there is a particular era which was the end of the 80s with the arriving of house music, new beat and acid house and all, and all that. that. That came right after the new wave and the, the synth pop that you were mm -hmm. talking about. Do you remember the way you received this kind of new, very new sounds? Uh, let's say the, the end of the 80s. I was very influenced. I wanted to make music because of acid house music coming out of Chicago. Uh, I wasn't necessarily influenced by Acid House music. I mean, excuse me, I was influenced by Acid House, but like new beat sounds out of Belgium. Uh, but I wanted to make music and I was heavily influenced by Chicago Acid House music and all the creators from Chicago back in the 88, 89. Uh, and house music then there follows. But it hit me hard and it's really what I wanted to do is I was DJing at the time, but I wanted to transition into getting these ideas and putting them into vinyl. I was saying, why am I playing other people's music <laughs> when I have these ideas? And that's what made me want to start to become a producer oh. and being known as an artist. So that was the beginning, Acid House and kind of craft work. The influences for me to do what I do now. We wanted to know what was your connection with the record vinyls uh, still today but at the time and you know the the the, the, the vinyl yeah uh, vinyl is a very tricky subject for me to talk about because i have 14,000 records 14,000 okay. and i probably won't play them again yeah you know um <laughs> yeah there is your wife yeah my, my wife is <laughs> she We can get you we, we have a love and hate records. relationship with, with records. I don't know. We, we talk about moving out of Philadelphia and where all my records are. <laughs> and I say, and she's like, why don't we move out of Philadelphia? And I say, well, uh, all the records will be so hard to move. You know, three records weigh one pound. I have 14,000 records. So, but I can't get rid of them. It's like cutting off uh, a finger or, or getting rid of a tattoo. They identify a point in my life, a point in, in time. They are, it's like archaeology for me. I, I, I dig and I find treasures, you know, and I've been collecting since I've been a teenager. 
I, I haven't played records. Sometimes I go into the studio and pick some out and put them on digital. Uh, for a time, I transferred a lot of my vinyl uh, analog recordings on vinyl into digital format, and I play them out. But it's a neat reaction. It's sometimes people come up and 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 say, "What is this?" You know, it's like it was a record released in 1982. I'm like, it, I thought it just came out. Yeah. You know, so it's records I love and I hate. You know, I love how heavy they, I love what they represent for me, the history, the time, the marking, uh, what it does for other people. Uh, I love the feeling of it, but I, I hate the feeling of it too, of having so many that it weighs me down. Mm. It's just so many records and yes. I can't get rid of them. And that's my love hate relationship. I with understand. Them. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> Can you give us a, a few names of the, the artists or DJs or both? that influenced you very strongly at the time? Let's say about the late 80s and maybe the early 90s. If you're from Chicago or else. Yeah, where? mostly, I mean, I don't really have any direct influences, but I get influenced by everything that was a movement. You know, all the Chicago stuff. I'm a huge fan of Chicago producers from uh, Mr. Fingers, Larry Hurd, Uh, Little Lewis, uh, Frankie Knuckles, uh, DJ Pierre, Spanky, Armando, uh, the labels from Chicago. In, I mean, my mind's just racing so many people mm. from... Mike Dunn? Mike Dunn, for sure. Uh, DJ Dion, who just passed away. Mm. You know, he was uh, a ghetto Chicago house influential DJ. Uh, I mean, so many people from Chicago. And then also Detroit, you know, Derek May, Carl Craig, uh, Juan Atkins as Cybertron when he did his electro stuff. Um, and colleagues like uh, Richie Houghton and John Aquaviva that started Plus Eight Records. Yes. They, they were my friends and colleagues and they were very, they were a soundboard. We were friends and we were colleagues and we also did music that we each other appreciated. Uh, so that those were uh, like the American side of electronic, and then also the English people that were if influenced by the Chicago people. So the Chicago house, that acid house people, were influenced by people in the UK, like 808 State, a guy called Gerald, Baby Ford. You know, uh, these people were influenced by who I was influenced by, and they were the first to kind of make it their own sound, the Summer of Love sound from England. Yes. And uh, I was influenced by that as well, too. Okay. So uh, a little bit of everything, but okay. mostly Chicago and New York. Uh, and actually New York, too. I mean, that, the house, that's a huge part of how I am. I always had a weird balance in between house and techno growing up um, and making music. People didn't know if my music was house or techno. But uh, some of the labels that I recorded on Strictly Rhythm, Nervous Records, You know, Masters at Work, Roger Sanchez, uh, Danny Teneglia, um, Todd Terry. I mean, these are, I looked up to these idols of mine, and then they're friends and colleagues now. Wow. And I'm very fortunate and very happy to have them influence and be a part of my life. About tech, the, the arriving of techno music, even if it was created in the late 80s, it, it exploded in the early 90s. What was your, your feeling when the Techno went huge. It was not only you know a little sound that growing up, but when it exploded, it exploded in Europe, pretty much. I mean, in America, it wasn't. It came with the rave scene in the mid to late '90s. Yes. Uh, but mostly it was in Europe, and I was happy because it got this music to a bigger audience of people who really want. I mean, this was before the internet, before. Uh, The technology had a basis besides radio. And in America, you couldn't hear this music. Well, you could hear the music in the clubs, but you had to be 21. And so the raves were the only out outlet to hear this music when you're under 21 years old. Oh, okay, 21. So I was happy that it kind of leaked into America and a lot of more people started to be 
uh, influenced and inspired by this. I mean, imagine hearing a sound of music that you've never heard before in your life, how mm. magnificent that is. Mm. And this is what it was for a lot of people that never heard this music outside of, I mean, it was my world. I would go to the record stores and buy music and uh, go and travel and collect and, and, and educate myself. And this was a really fun time. Uh, and so I was, I was happy that it, it got out there for more people to get to appreciate it and know different music than what's just simply on the radio. Mm, absolutely. You were talking uh, about uh, creating your own music. When did you start and what kind of setup did you have at the, at the time? Yeah, it was simple and basic. I started making music with a, an old friend and partner of mine, King Britt, mm. in 1989. Uh, he had most of the equipment. I had a, a drum machine. Which and was? We, uh, I had two. I had a Roland R5 and yes. a, a Lisa's HDR16. Okay. And then I started accumulating more uh, equipment. 808, a 909, uh, Roland 303, two of them. Of course. <laughs> uh, a, a Kai S950 sampler. And I used to do things really basic and easy uh, and use guitar pedals and uh, effects for unconventional way of hard hardware recording because there wasn't much software stuff at the time except for uh, digital workstations. Mm. And I, I listened to my old music and I liked the fact of wanting to go back and try to recreate this old sound that's been lost because it's so how it is now. Yes. So I have a new track that's coming out soon on my label Ovum Recordings called uh, Attention Tension. I played it tonight and okay. it's really uh, an ode to my music in the past, my minimal sound like of Don't Laugh, How's the Music Era, Super Freak, along with the new production style of the contemporary Josh Wink mm. right now. So I reminisce of the past. Yes, that's uh, that's good to hear because it's we are a record label uh, before everything and it's absolutely our way of uh, making music. Uh, just being inspired by the past but yeah. making and using the new uh, the new patterns of music and try to create a you know kind of a mixture with yeah. uh, both. I try to make old school music in a contemporary way. Yes, absolutely. I will steal this, <laughs> this quote. <laughs> Do you. it, please. <laughs> okay. Jesse, what's your favorite track? Yourself that you make yourself, because you will make a lot of lot of good tracks. What are my favorite? Uh, well, well, you well, didn't ask me really what my favorite them. one was. No, I mean everything I do. Here's another quote for you. Uh, everything I do is a representation of myself. It's kind of like getting a tattoo. You know, you get a tattoo and it 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 signifies a point in your life, what you were doing, where you were. Uh, music for me signifies a point in my life and where I was and what I was doing. And I'm happy and proud of the music that I make. I mean, tattoos you can get removed. Music you can't. It's out there, mm. you know. You can go and get a tattoo removed at a, at a shop and it's painful and it hurts. Uh, but you can't go to everybody's house that has your records and CDs and <laughs> take them back. I'm happy with my early music, I really am. But it sounds, a lot of the early music, you can tell it's early sound by the way it's produced and the technology that was available. So I'm very happy with the contemporary, the music that I'm doing now, the remixes I'm doing now, I, I am so happy and proud of. I feel like I'm making the best music that I've made now, uh, from remixes to original music but I'm still happy with the stuff that I've done, the albums that I've done, and I'm very happy that I've had a prolific career and made a lot of music. Uh, tonight I played a lot of my stuff, older and newer. You know, people will recognize the older classics. Uh, Don't Laugh, Higher States of Consciousness. I also played Selecta and Resist, and some newer remixes. So a little bit to kind of answer your question, I'm, I'm proud of everything. Okay. But there isn't one. It's kind of like if you have four children and someone says, "So, which is your favorite child?" But by the way, what do you um, what do you like about electronic music of today? I tend to listen to a lot of non-dance music. You know, ambient, ambient, down tempo, experimental. Uh, this is what makes me happy. That's uh, music that's around the house is not dance music. You know, there's so much. Con 
content out there right now. It's really difficult to find, for me, the stuff that resonates. So I have to look and spend a lot of time to find a lot of uh, things. But there's so much stuff and there's so many avenues, whether it be digital streaming services, whether it be internet radio, but it's not solely techno or house music. It's ex I like more experimental mm -hmm. things, uh, music around. You know, I, I'm pointing to my wife. I, yes. I always have to have music at the house, whether it be uh, like Brian Eno or you know Max Richter or something that just creates an oral atmosphere in, mm -hmm. in our house. That uh, sometimes then we have a dance party. Yes. Or the Grateful Dead, Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young. She's a pure rock. Uh, Fleetwood Mac. Fleetwood Mac, yeah. I, mm. I have to play music in my house to make my wife happy. Yes, of course. <laughs> well, when she dances, her 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 food tastes better. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> She's a great cook. Okay. I'm going to ask you the question back to the past. You take the DeLorean from back to the future, you know, the, yeah, yeah. the, the car, and you can program one time and one place. When and where will it be? I'm going to say a, a big lesson I learned was signing a contract. <laughs> I was going to say something about uh, parents and prolific and uh, profound, like, I wish I said this when my parents got divorced. But I think it's going to be telling my lawyer at the time something that I should have said. So I probably wouldn't have signed a certain contract okay. back at the time. Because if that was the case, then I would have uh, learned a lot more and be a little bit more... I'm not full of regrets, for sure, but I like yes. to learn from my mm -hmm. past. And so I would go back to a, a day I signed a contract is sometimes I get asked, you know, what would an older Josh say to a younger Josh now? So that, that's one of the things I would say. Another topic. What is the Josh Wink uh, musical guilty pleasure? Something you listen, but you don't really want to talk about it because you're a bit ashamed of it and you will share it with us uh, tonight. What do you think? Uh, I asked you, yes, I asked the question to your wife no, and yes. your son. Okay. She'll, she'll what probably it is. know more than me. What is uh, it? A, a musical guilty pleasure that you know that I like, that I would be embarrassed to say that I like. Mom would know this. Yeah, I thought you would. My my son says he thinks he knows. My when my cats they jump on my keyboard when okay. I make music. Okay. <laughs> but that's uh, that's a good memory for sure. That's a good thought. That's true. I I enjoy seeing my cats making music for me. Oh, so that's. That's your secret weapon. That's the yes. cat. Okay. Amadala. I like I I like pop music. Like good pure pop music. Oh, yeah, that's that's oh shit. Can you repeat what your wife just said? So we No, I'm not going no, to. No, you're not. Okay, we will take the other no, microphone. <laughs> I I shouldn't have asked her. No, I'm proud I like Harry Styles is I don't know much about him, but I found out late, I'm like the old man. Um, Harry Styles had this song that my wife really likes and I like seeing her dance and twirl around the house to it, which is uh, Watermelon Sugar High. That's a guilty, that's a guilty, he's, he's a great performer. I, 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 I like his music, or some of his music. I don't know much of it, but you know, the thing in the past is that we used to listen to albums and know the whole album now we just know singles yes it's a it was an experience from the beginning to the end yes and you were listening to all the the tracks the one after the other now it's just like you download or you stream yes. a certain song and one you don't track. know the the rest of the cuts now i can't think of the rest of the interview because i'm thinking of the harry Styles song <laughs> it's really thanks thanks kim <laughs> <laughs> i wanted to ask you a question important question with which artist would you dream to collaborate with but Maybe this artist is dead or it's not possible. You know, someone really special in your heart. I've met him and it was amazing that he knew me and my music. But David Bowie. Oh, 
he played in Philadelphia and he has a, a good uh, relationship with Philadelphia. Uh, he's recorded music there, his strings are there, his Live at the Tower Theater is there. So he liked Philly. So he came to Philly in the late 90s or early 2000s and did a series of two or three shows. And they asked, his management asked me to be oh. the opening act for him as a DJ to provide the music. And when I met him, he was just... It was amazing to to meet and talk with him, and he really made me feel like I was the only one in the the world. That he gave me the attention and focus, and he's like, "I like your music," and he mentioned two songs that I did, and I was really blown away. Wow. And he is someone I, I I don't say that he his music influences me in terms of me making music, but I appreciate him so much as an artist and uh, a, a, as a creator and what he's done for uh, the world of, of music uh, and fashion and art, art, you know? So I, I guess I would like to have done something with him, okay. perhaps. And about electronic and techno music, is there still um, an artist or a producer that you would love to collaborate with, but you, it wasn't the case for whatever reason? I, I haven't worked with a lot of people electronically. Uh, I, I've worked with uh, Four Hero, Uh, I've worked with uh, King Brit, my ex-partner. Richie Harden and I did something that wasn't released that was cool. Oh. And I do a lot of remixes and stuff for people. But I, I really wouldn't say that there's someone that I'm like, this is, I got to collaborate. But I'm being open to do collaborations because I'm used to doing all the music and production myself. Mm. So I'm now I'm beginning to realize that it's kind of cool to collaborate and shoot ideas off of each other. Kink. An artist. Yes. He and I talked about doing a, oh, yeah. a something That a collaborative. Harry Romero and I started mm -hmm. doing and sending sending stems to each other. So I'm still thinking, but I'm beginning to open my eyes and realize that it may be fun to do something like that. And uh, yes, the the advancement of technology makes it uh, so much easier to do it than used to. Before you have to put it on a floppy disk and send it in the mail. Mm. Or put it on reel to reel and send it to them. And <laughs> nowadays you can just drop it digitally and send it through a Dropbox or something like that. And it's really cool. Yes, my son. Ah, that's right. Thank you. My son uh, informed me that Rodriguez Jr. Yes. Uh, Olivier. Yeah, yes. Yeah. He, uh, who was also, he recorded on Ovum Recordings uh, as the youngsters. Yes, uh, with uh, along with uh, Gilles. Gilles, yeah. that's right. Uh, and on FCOM and yes. uh, he and I, um, uh, Olivia and I have become friends and he was in Ibiza, my, my family and I have been living in Ibiza for the past month and a half as we do every summer and we went to see and visit Rodriguez Jr. play yes. live and he gave my son a history lesson on the Moog Sub 37. Oh. Uh, so your son is interested. Is he's interested in this uh, in sound? Are you getting interested in music now? Okay. Yeah. A and you have a TR808 uh, sweatshirt. Yeah, pretty cool, well. right? We should have uh. done the interview with your son. <laughs> <laughs> he's probably more interesting than me. Uh. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's both. Oh, interesting. <laughs> But uh, he brought to my attention that uh, Rodriguez Jr. and I talked about doing something together. Oh yes, that would and be great. And he's like, "How are we going to work this out?" But he lives in Miami now. So it's a little bit easier for us to be on the same time frame. Yes. But I think he has a vast history and knowledge, and he's a very talented artist and producer. Um, so maybe we'll do something together. And that's a unique combination right okay. there, because the stuff he's doing is is a little different from what I do. But yes. he's a very talented and good yes. musician that I respect. We're well, looking forward to it. Thank you yeah. so much. <laughs> Thank you. By, yes. by the way, about your setup today, uh, is it a mixture of uh, VST and hardware, or what is it exactly? As a Lately, I've been working solely in the box. I have a studio, but I haven't been there in a long time. And after COVID, I've been making music just with a little control keyboard, uh, like a push controller, Ableton Live and a UAD audio interface and software. And I've really kind of got it down. Mm -hmm. And it's nice to be able to, I was never one to make music in the box. I had to always be in the studio. Mm -hmm. And now I can feel creative wherever I am okay. on, the, on the laptop, on an Apple Mac. 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> you know why I'm saying that. <laughs> Fine. Um, the question, millionaire. I give you one million dollar now. You cannot put it in the bank and do nothing with it, but you have to do something with it. What would you do with that? I can't give it to my son, right? You do whatever you want. Uh, it's your question. <laughs> it's right. very generous of you. Yeah, well, he costs a lot of money anyways. <laughs> um, I think I'd be uh, invest in my community and uh, build a creative center where people can be free and be artists and be open and creative that people ha that don't have the opportunity to do so and make it a think tank of art regardless of its music or visual and I'd like to be able to open this up to people that don't have the chance and people like myself who can coach and help out and be uh, inspiration for people I think I'd probably do something like that okay okay what is the your favorite media ah. if we want to listen to your music I use them all. They're all tools of mine. So I use SoundCloud to listen to demos. Okay. Uh, people send me music on SoundCloud. I listen to most of my streaming music on Spotify. But I use everything as a tool for us to be able to use. So I guess that's it. Okay. But for primarily, I listen and I use Spotify. Okay. The algorithms are good in terms of turning me on to new music as well. I listen to internet radio a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, I listen to uh, an Ibiza station, Open Lab Radio. I listen to sometimes Laurent Cardier's oh. uh, Pablo's Basement. Oh, PBB? Yeah. Uh, Benja is, Benjamin is the administrator ah. of this radio. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Well, there yes. you go. <laughs> internet radio. That's I listen. To, it's sometimes so I listen to it on an app called TuneIn, and sometimes I have a problem with signing on to PBB. And uh, the, the, last, the last question, uh, what are your upcoming projects? Whoa. Or it's Whoa. not secret. Oh. Like like la, la, la. Well, who, who does this song anyway? Zombie Nation. Oh, Zombie Nation. Nation. That's yeah. it. Ken Kraft. Uh, yeah, on, on DJ Gigolo. Yeah. Yes. Uh, you, international Gigolo. Yes. Um, okay, so. The upcoming question. projects. Oh, upcoming projects. I just did a whole bunch. Of, I just remixed Os Osiris. Mm -hmm. uh, who recorded on Ovum before and records with Laurent on uh, Code 3. I did a remix for his new track on Gregor Tresher's Break New Soil, uh, Break New Soil Records. Uh, I just did a remix for Nicole Mudeber's label from Alexander Technique and Roland Clark. Uh, I just did a remix for another French producer, Mad Ben, that's coming out oh, on, yes. on Elm. Uh, I did a remix for uh, someone else. I just I can I'm on the spot, and the song's coming on again. And I can't think. Uh, I had a track that was released on Red Kiss uh, on Radio Slaves label. Mm. Um, I had a release just recently on Jimster Free Range Records. I have a release coming out on Soul Claps E Funk Records. So I have a lot of really cool neat stuff coming about That's and I'm very happy with uh, the way things are going and I, I look forward to people knowing and hearing about it and so it's still a lot of cool music coming out okay I'm doing it I'm That's keeping, great. keeping relevant okay well uh, Josh thank thank you very much for your time and for the interview it uh, it was uh, an honor for us thank you thank you very much and uh, see you next time a tout à l'heure a plus a plus <laughs>